What's going on everybody? I am back outside. It's warm enough to film outside, which is awesome because spring is springing. And that means you can plant stuff right now. Uh, unless you're in Canada and maybe some of the more northern countries, I don't know. When does your spring start up there in Canada? Do you guys already have like tomatoes and corn coming on or is spring still... Not quite sprung yet. I'd like to know. In fact, most of my viewers, I've noticed, are from the United States, which makes sense. I'm the United States. I speak English. Uh, but I'd like to know, comment down below where you are in the world and what you're able to plant right now. Like, if you're in Australia and it's fall, what can you do there? Like, I, I don't know. I don't live there. If you're in England or United Kingdom or Finland or, or Sweden, uh, what can you plant right now in the middle of April, middle to late April? Um, I want to talk about a few things that you can plant right now. Plus, I want to inspire you to grow some stuff even if you have zero outdoor space, like if you don't have the luxury of having an outdoor garden at your place of residence, since we all have to kind of stay home right now, what can you grow right now with zero outdoor space? First, the stuff I'm growing right now, I've got peas going. I've got lettuce. I've got radishes. I've got little baby teeny carrots, and I planted these a few weeks ago, uh, and they're just barely coming up. I've also planted some new ones. That on s just this last Saturday, like two or three days ago, I planted some new ones. I planted kohlrabi. I planted... Uh, I planted a whole bunch of stuff. I can't even remember what I planted. More carrots, potatoes. I planted purple potatoes. Uh, those are always some of my favorites. And uh, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff you can plant right now. And in like two or three weeks, you can plant like everything else, at least in zone six. If you're in California, this is old news. But where I'm at, it's exciting because it's all, it's all time. It's time for everything. Um, so get out there and plant some stuff. Try some stuff. Try something you've never tried before. You only have like 50 or 60 chances in your life to grow stuff in the summertime so try some stuff grow grow something right now let's talk about how you can grow stuff even if you have zero outdoor space and i'm of course talking about hydroponics growing things hydroponically science has shown that growing stuff is awesome it's awesome and hydroponics is one of the easiest ways to grow things even if you have no experience you can do everything from a makeshift setup of parts you have laying around or you can buy a few things and get a little bit nicer setup going what you need are seeds a container for the water a light source, nutrients, and optionally you need net cups, hydrogen, or some sort of medium to hold the plant up, and even op optionally er, an air pump. Now unfortunately, if you've been watching some of the other videos on how to start a hydroponic setup, you can't do it for three dollars. That's probably a lie. Unless you already have a lot of the things like grow lights and fertilizer and seeds, then maybe you can pull it off for three bucks. But if you're starting from scratch, it's going to cost you a few more dollars than that. I want to talk about three different types of setups that I've used myself that have worked great for me, and they're and I'm going to go from like least complex to most complex, and uh, I'm not going to tell you how to build these things. I suggest you go look at some more detailed videos on how to do those, but I just want to show you what's out there, some of the options, and maybe inspire you to grow some stuff. Number one, crack key is probably the easiest setup you can have. You can take a container of water, somehow suspend the plants. I've used hydrogen or rock wool or a peat pellet, or uh, you can use gravel. Some people use gravel, aquarium gravel, anything that will hold the plant up, cocoa core, um, and you Put it in, just spend it in the water, add the nutrients to the water, put it under a light, and as the plant grows, the water goes down, and by the time the water's gone, the plant's ready for harvest. Lettuce grows especially well in a cracky setup. Um, I've used $20 shop lights from Home Depot. You can get yourself a more expensive LED light, or if you have a nice sunny window that gets four, five, six hours of sun a day, put it in the window and you'll be fine. I have one sitting on my porch right now. It gets sun in the early morning, and in the afternoon it's in the shade, and it's doing fine. Second, Almost as easy as the cracky system is a deep water culture. It's almost identical to the cracky, except you add an air stone and you keep the water full. The advantage is you often have better results and fewer problems than you, you do in a cracky setup because your air, your water is oxygenated and thus less hospitable to rootborne problems. Cracky can have some root rot problems if you're not careful, especially with longer lived plants, your water's kind of stagnant. A lot of times adding aeration will make your plants grow bigger, better, faster. Third, this is a little bit more complex, but I kind of like it the best, I think. Ebb and flow, or flood and drain. Uh, I've made a previous video about ebb and flow on my channel, and I'll link to that down below. But with an ebb and flow setup, you have a large container with lots of space that you can use for growing. And it fills up with water, and then it drains out. Now, for this, you need a container. I used a masonry tub. And some growing medium, I used hydrogen. And a pump, obviously, and a reservoir for the water. 
And it's quite easy once to use once you get it up and humming. I let mine go for a year without taking it down, without cleaning it, without really doing anything, and it works fantastic. I probably could have let it go longer. I just decided that maybe I should clean this after a year. So in conclusion, grow something. Either do it outside if you can, or if winter's coming where you are, or you have no outside space, try your hand at hydroponics. Like I said before, you're not going to live forever. You've got, what, 50, 60 seasons to grow something in a lifetime? Don't let those seasons go to waste. All right, cut. There's lots of gardening stuff you can do, especially if you're home, even if you have zero space. Oh, and a bonus thing. Bonus thing. Uh, my wife had asked me to clean up this pumpkin that I left sitting around since last fall, and it was super cool when it grew because it got stuck in, like, this garden claw, and it grew in there, and it was, you know, I put it on Instagram, and... And uh, it was, it's just a cool pumpkin. And I let it sit outside all fall, all winter, and now it looks like this. And she asked me to clean that up. So I said, since you're home and you have all this free time, clean this up. And I'll, I might, I might get to that. I might. Um, so you can clean up some things around the yard that have been there since last fall. Oh, and one last thing you can do. If you've got like an extra hour or two, just hit that play button. Like watch the rest of my videos. It'll change your life. That's probably a bit generous. It probably not, it's not going to change your life, but... At the very least, it'll be mildly, mildly entertaining. So give this video a thumbs up just because, I mean, you know, you should. It's a great video. I think it's a great video. I'd give it a thumbs up if I were watching it all the way to the end. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.